subject but this is a subject that if we all work together we can solve because this is not something that has to continue but as long as we don't challenge the social and cultural norms that we have then it's going to continue so one of my missions is to help prevent sexual and domestic violence in the future 50 years from now I don't want anyone to have to deal with the same issues that we're dealing with today but if we don't honestly and critically deal with the situation um, in, a, in a manner that's really going to eradicate the problem, then we are going to be here 50 years from now. So I'm going to do my best to go through this slide and give you information that you can practically use immediately to help create change where you live. Because it's going to take all of us working together. Now, we're going to go over what sexual violence is and some of the aspects of it and then also go through dating violence, and then go through some things that we can use to help prevent it in the future. Sexual violence is the use of unwanted acts, words, actions, touching, whatever. Whatever it is, if it's against the person's will. Consent is important. Consent is you gaining clear permission that you understand from your partner that you can actually use. Um, I do a lot of trainings on the campuses of FAMU, uh, FSU, and TCC. do a lot of middle schools, high schools. And one thing I tell people a lot is consent is very important. We're not talking about what she looked or he looked like he wanted. That's not good enough. If the person doesn't say, yes, you can, that's not consent. We, we're, not, we're not searching for things that, or ideas that say, well, I kind of... No, and I kind of didn't. No, we want clear definitions, consent. So before you or anyone else goes move forward with a sexual act, consent has to be given. And if consent is not given, then you're violating somebody's personal space. There is, there is no, nothing on earth that should give anybody the right to think that somebody deserves to be violated. I was in an argument with somebody earlier this week about women deserving to be raped because of what they wear. I don't know about them or anybody else, but you should be, women should be able to walk down the street naked and nothing happens to them. Now, of course our society is not there yet. So we have to be honest with ourselves. Okay, we're not where we're supposed to be. We don't have that level of, of respect and, and um, we don't look at women as human beings sometimes. So how do we get there? Going through information like this. So understanding what sexual violence is. Understanding what domestic violence is. <coughs> sexual coercion. Sexual coercion is using your power to manipulate someone into doing something that you want them to do. Right? Now we're on a college campus. Um, I don't know about you all, but I've seen it in my times. Uh, I was in college between 2002 and 2007. Don't be adding up stuff, but that was my time. <laughs> and I saw it a lot. I saw young girls taken advantage of by persons in, in positions of authority, not just males, but females as well. And I, I hear stories all the time because I'm the person people like to talk to. So I hear stories all the time, sexual coercion. 
You do not have to conform to whatever this person is trying to get you to just because they have the illusion of power. If you are going to lose out on something, lose out on it, but you'll keep yourself intact. You can keep your self-esteem and all this together. Now, remember, these persons who are the perpetrators, it all stems back to low self-esteem. It all stems back to people searching for power and control. We're in a society where everybody's looking for power and control, and how do I become powerful? That's a question a lot of people have to ask. How do I become powerful? Well, for some people, unfortunately, for some people, they become powerful by overpowering others. We live in a male-dominated society. The society says women are second-class citizens. I don't agree, because I, I can show you plenty examples of women who can do things that us men never dreamed of doing. But society says women are second-class citizens. Now, if we continue to move forward thinking and treating women as second-class citizens, and that goes for men and women, then we're all a part of the problem. So how do we become a part of the solution? Challenging the social norms. Challenging things that says this group should be more powerful than this group. Ask the question, why? Simply asking why. And then you taking proper actions that go against this negative thought, this negative ideology, right? Sexual violence and sexual coercion do not have to happen, but they happen because of the power and control aspect that some people are trying to seek. Let's move forward. Other examples of sexual violence, child sexual abuse. I tell people all the time, especially in my high school, stop walking around with pictures of naked people in your phones. Just be, we're in the age where girls and guys are taking naked pictures of themselves and texting it to other people. Got to stop doing that. Especially if you're underage. Did you all know anybody under the age of 16 that has sex is that's illegal? Did you know that? So, of course, a lot of us did some illegal stuff, but none of us really knew the law. The law is what we need to know. Anybody under the age of 16 was having sex, that's illegal. And if you are having sex with somebody under the age of 16, then that's illegal. Um, my, my middle school and high school girls, a lot of them are preyed upon by college college guys. I can't tell you how many times I've seen 16-year-old girls, 15-year-old girls who are dating 24-year-old guys. So I asked them, you know, let, let's just put on our thinking cap and think about it for a minute. What's the purpose of this 24-year-old coming after you? It's for power and control. He understands that he can overpower you. He understands that he can control you. There are things that you don't know that I know. There are things that you don't have that I have. Cars, a house, money. That's really only three things I need at that stage right now. So she's looking at me as if I'm somebody who, who's grander than I am. But that person there has problems and they need counseling. Yeah,